Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at the accounting for leases and specifically from a lessor's perspective. In the prior session, we looked at the lessee's perspective. So it's very important to understand the difference from an accounting perspective for leases if you are dealing from a lessor versus a lessee. So in this session, we'll focus on the lessor and let's go ahead and get started. Adam entered into a non-cancellable lease with Maggie. So Maggie is the lessor. The commencement date of the lease was June 1st, X1. The annual lease payment for that medical equipment starting at the commencement of the lease, $20,471.94. So simply put, the payments are made as we sign the lease, so immediately. So this is we are dealing with an annuity due. The bargain purchase option is 4000 Well, simply put, now we, we understand that this is a finance lease because the first question, is this an operating or a finance lease? We are told there's a bargain purchase option. This makes it a finance lease. Remember, to be a finance lease, we have to meet one of five criteria. One of them is a bargain purchase option. We already met. The lease term is five years. The economic life of the lease is 10. So under the lease, the, the lease life, we don't qualify, but we qualify under the bargain purchase. The lessor's cost is 60000 This is important because we're going to be doing accounting for the lessor. Important in a sense, you need to be aware of it. The fair value of the asset is 91000 if Maggie wants to sell it. The lessor implicit rate is 8%. The lessee incremental rate, we don't have to worry about the lessee, is 8% as well. And Maggie uses reversing entries. So we're going to go ahead first, try to put the lease, um, try to initially put the, the receivable on the books. So from a lessor's perspective, they sold this asset. This is a finance lease. So when they sell it, they have a receivable. So how do we compute the receivable? Because we're going to have a receivable. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Well, very similar to when we compute the liability, the liability for the lessee, because the lessee will have a liability. The lessor will have to compute the present value of the rental payment of the payment, which is the present value of the payments, plus the present value of any guaranteed or unguaranteed residual value. So from the source perspective, you have to find the present value of either guaranteed or unguaranteed. And this is the present value, which is we don't have any guaranteed or unguaranteed residual value in this example, but I do cover it in a separate session. And the present value of a bargain purchase option, which we do have a present value of a bargain purchase option of $4,000. Now, let's go ahead and compute this. So we're looking at n equal to 5 i equal to 8%. Now you go to the present value table and you compute the present value of the payment. Remember, this is the present value of an annuity due, not ordinary annuity. And we'll take the payment times the factor will give us 88,280. Then we'll take the bargain purchase option, which is $4,000 times the present value of a single amount of a dollar and the factor is 0 0.68058 will give us 2720. You might see some rounding here, but anyway, the total receivable will be 491,000. So this is the receivable that goes on the books of the lessor. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna switch to an Excel sheet and look at the journal entries from initiating the receivable until making the payments. So on this Excel sheet, we're gonna starting by Looking at June 1st, 20X1, we have a lease receivable of 91,000, and I showed you how we compute this. Now we're gonna be receiving payment, annual lease payment. Well, the first annual lease payment is, is made immediately. So the first annual lease payment is 20,472. Since it's made immediately, it does not, it does not 
it does not involve interest therefore it's going to reduce it's going to recover it's going to reduce the receivable by this much 20472 therefore the balance as of 6120 x1 is 70582 now let's go ahead and journalize the initial lease and journalize this payment so from a lessor's perspective what what the lessor is going to do they're going to debit a receivable of 91000 they're going to credit sales of 91000 they technically sold it and remember we were giving the cost of sales for 60000 and we are we have to credit the inventory for 60000 so this is to initially put the lease uh, i'm sorry put the receivable on the books because the lessor maggie sold this asset to adam now bear in mind if we had any guaranteed residual value let's assume let's assume that's the case and it was for three thousand dollars the present value of three thousand dollars what we do we would reduce the sales by three and we would reduce the cost of sales by three just fyi just in case you're wondering but again i did cover this in a separate recording but i wanted to give you a, a different scenario but here we don't have any unguaranteed residual value then if you remember we we made a payment immediately now let's book the journal entry for this payment for this payment it's basically pretty straightforward since we made it immediately we're gonna since we received it immediately the the lessee paid it immediately we're gonna debit cash and we're gonna reduce the receivable and this is what happened here debit cash credit the receivable and the receivable went down to seventy thousand uh five twenty eight so this is the balance now what's gonna happen by the end of the year 1231 which is seven months later seven months later from june 1st till 1231 we're gonna have to do what we're gonna have to accrue any interest on that deal so let me let me show you how do we compute the interest for one year so the interest from june 1st 20x1 to june 1st 20x2 is 5642 how do we compute the interest well it's the balance of the receivable as of the beginning of the period times eight percent now on june 1st 20x2 we're going to be paying twenty thousand seven four seventy two five thousand six hundred forty two is considered interest revenue and the remaining will reduce the receivable but we are not at june 1st 20x2 first we have to worry about 12 31 20x2 at this point we have to accrue any interest receivable well how do we accrue interest receivable we're gonna take the 5642 which is the full year interest and multiply it by 712 why 712 because it's starting in june june july august september october november and december and that's going to give us at 1231 accrued interest of three thousand two hundred ninety one dollars and thirty cents so june 31st I'm sorry, December 31st, 20x1, we accrue the interest. This is to accrue the interest and record the revenue for that accrued interest. Now, I told you that Maggie uses reversal accounting. Therefore, a day later, after we publish the financial statement, show the receivable, show the revenue on the financial statement, what we do is we reverse it. We're going to credit the receivable and debit the revenue to remove it to remove it so it's going to make our life easier on june 1st therefore this entry appeared on the financial statement then for the next year we removed it so this we can keep it but we're going to remove it for simplicity let's keep on going since we are working with this on june 1st 20x2 maggie would receive the second payment from adam the payment is for twenty thousand four seventy two maggie would credit interest revenue 5642 which is we already computed this amount here and i showed you how to do it and maggie would credit the lease receivable for 14,830. so the lease receivable will go down by that much then we can let's let's finish the table here then how do we finish the table well a year later we'll make another payment the interest will be based on the previous balance and the remaining will go toward the receivable the balance will go down then we would receive another payment again part of it will be interest receivable uh, interest revenue and the remaining will be the balance then we'll make we we'll receive another payment again we compute the interest revenue then the remain the remainder is is account receivable then we have the bargain purchase 
payment of 4,000 and it should be around zero okay so this is how we compute the table so make sure you are familiar with the table how to compute the table and if you can do the journal entry for if you can do the journal entry for this you can do the journal entry for the remainder now how about Maggie how about depreciation how much Maggie will depreciate and the answer is nada no depreciation for Maggie because technically Maggie sold the asset to Adam so there's no depreciation this is a finance lease how about how about if Maggie had doubts or doubt or doubts about Adam making the payments? So let's assume she sold it, but she's not sure whether Adam is going to make the payment or not. Well, if there's any doubts, then we have no sale here because we have doubts. Under those circumstances, what we have to do when we receive the cash, we're going to be considered unearned revenue until we earn it. There's no sale here. Therefore, we will debit unearned revenue. And once we earn the revenue, well, it's easy. We debit unearned revenue and we credit revenue. Basically, because we have doubt, no payment, no sale took place under those circumstances. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and work additional MCQs, true, false. Look at additional resources. Take your CPA exam seriously. This topic is covered. Don't shortchange yourself. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe. The CPA exam is worth it.